Hello, I'm back. And this time, I'm not going to talk about a condition about a conditioning effect. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. Uh, but we're going to talk about extinction. Uh, this is the first uh, of a couple of uh, segments that I have planned on extinction. It's, prior to this, we've been talking about acquisition processes, acquisition and Pavlovian mechanism, acquisition and instrumental conditioning. Uh, and during acquisition, you know, a condition stimulus followed by a U.S. or a response is followed by a reinforcer in the case of uh, instrumental conditioning. Well, after response has become a, learned, after, after the uh, response is uh, well acquired, you can uh, introduce extinction. And in extinction, you no longer present the unconditioned stimulus in, in the case of Pavlovian procedures, or you no longer present the reinforcer in the case of instrumental conditioning. So a uh, Pavlovian extinction procedure involves presenting the conditioned stimulus by itself over and over again. And in instrumental conditioning, it involves just allowing the response to, to take place, but there is no more uh, delivery of the reinforcer. You don't get anything for responding. And what do you suppose happens? Well, what people usually talk about is that extinction results in a decline in uh, the conditioned behavior, be it a Pavlovian or instrumental behavior. If we may look at the next slide, this shows a number of conditioning effects. And uh, in fact, you know, de decline in responding is the most prominent one, the one that most people measure, and the one, uh, the one that most people, is the only one that most people measure. Most studies of extinction just look at the rate of response decline. And well, that's important and in interesting, it, it's not the whole story of extinction by any means. Uh, there is a phenomenon called extinction burst, you know, where if you first introduce extinction, there may be actually an increase in re rate of responding. This mo most often observed in uh, uh, operant or instrumental situations following continuous reinforcement. Uh, we don't know a lot about extinction bursts. Uh, if uh, you've used the positive uh, event as the U.S. or reinforcer, something like food or a desirable event, you introduce extinction when uh, this event is no longer available, well, people are going to get pissed off. <laughs> you get a frustration response, and a frustration response can be really interesting. You get shouting, aggression, anger. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, we don't study frustration very much uh, these days as, as a function of the... Uh, <laughs> introduction of an extinction procedure. And uh, one of uh, an absolutely fascinating uh, effect, behavioral effect of extinction is increased response to variability. Uh, there, the variations in how the subject chooses to perform the response increases tremendously, it tries all kinds of new things. There's a lot of increase in variability, uh, which is an extinction effect. Again, way understudied. We have some data on it, but not nearly enough. Okay. So uh, what determines the rate of decline in responding? The next slide illustrates uh, major determinants. Uh, biggest factor is the schedule of reinforcement. That's an effect before you start extinction. That has a huge effect. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, whether uh, acquisition involved presenting the reinforcer on every trial or in uh, acquisition involved presenting the reinforcer on only some of the trials. That makes a huge difference. And the other thing that's really interesting uh, with respect to the rate of response decline is uh, that you generally get more responding in extinction if you use less reinforcement <laughs> during the acquisition phase, which is you know, just the opposite of what you might think. You might think that uh, uh, you're going to build a lot of persistence in the behavior if you reinforce it a lot. Well, reinforcing behavior a lot uh, uh, may lead to more rapid loss of that response when extinction is introduced. 
And I'll review a, a number of phenomena of that sort, which are called uh, paradoxical reward effects, the first of which is uh, shown in the next slide. And uh, these are not real data. They look much better than real data, <laughs> the hypothetical data, these idealized drawings, illustrating what's called the overtraining extinction effect, OK? So, uh, and uh, this works uh, uh, best if you use continuous reinforcement. So imagine an instrumental conditioning situation in which a response is followed by the reinforcer every time the response occurs. And of course, the rate of responding is gonna increase. And uh, in the dashed uh, curve, we continue training after the subject has reached asymptote, okay? The subject has gotten to a high level of behavior, but we keep training. So we, we do overtraining in that group. The other group is just trained to asymptote. So uh, the other group uh, is, uh, my dog is lying on the floor here, and he's having a dream, and it's hiccuping. <laughs> if you heard the hiccup. <laughs> anyway, let's go away. What, all kinds of interesting things happen during recordings, don't they? Anyway, uh, the control group in this experiment is trained on just until they get to asymptote. They don't get extra training after they reach asymptote. The overtraining group gets extra training after they reach asymptote. And then you introduce extinction. Which group declines in their responding faster? It turns out the overtrained subjects quit sooner. And why do they quit? Well, the more overtraining you get, the more you come to expect the reward after each response. The more you expect the reward after each response, the absence of the reward becomes really frustrating. And it's that frustration that drives the behavior down. So, <laughs> Here's my advice to you. If you want to be nice to your roommate or uh, uh, person you're living with or married to, and you make them a cup of coffee every day, <laughs> they're going to expect that they're going to have the cup of coffee every time they get up in the morning. And the day you don't feel like making the coffee, they're going to get really pissed at you. <laughs> so... Um, it's it's best not to do favors for every for someone and be real consistent about it because if you then stop doing the favor <laughs> they get really angry that's the overtraining extinction effect don't overtrain their expectation of reward we may look at the next slide this is the reward magnitude effect this has to do with uh, providing a large reward following an instrumental response versus a small reward uh, you might think that if you really want the instrumental response to be well ingrained and stamped in, you should have big reward. Well, big reward may get you a slightly higher level of responding during acquisition. But if you introduce extinction, having received a big reward, extinction is going to be much more frustrating and uh, the drop off in performance is going to be much more dramatic. And this uh, is the reward magnitude effect, also a paradoxical reward effect. You see this most prominently if you use continuous reinforcement during the acquisition phase. Okay, the next slide shows you the granddaddy of all paradoxical reward effects. Namely, the partial reinforcement extinction effect, the PREE. -E. There have been just hundreds of experiments done on the partial reinforcement extinction effect. And what this refers to is during acquisition, you're comparing two training conditions. One of those training conditions, as illustrated by the dashed line, is uh, a subject gets reinforced for each occurrence of the response, continuous reinforcement. Uh, the solid line shows partial reinforcement. So they may get reinforced 50% of the time they respond or 25% of the time they respond or 10, 15% of the time they may. So they're on an intermittent schedule of reinforcement, variable ratio of some sort. Uh, and what do you see when you introduce extinction? 
what you see when you introduce extinction, the guys who get continuous reinforcement quit pretty fast. Whereas the ones that get partial or intermittent reinforcement continue to respond for quite a while. Actually, the extinction curves are really shallow following intermittent reinforcement. The partial reinforcement extinction effect is the bane of the existence of parents, <laughs> particularly parents who want to discourage kids from whining. Imagine taking a kid to a grocery store. And of course, the kid initially might be okay with coming along grocery shopping, but uh, kind of gets bored and and uh, starts to whine and say, and, and and the kids know how to get to parents, and so and they'll uh, ask to uh, uh, if they could buy a toy, and the parent says, "No, we're just buying you know milk and eggs and stuff we need this time. No toys." The kids <laughs> ask again, "Can I have a toy? Let me. I mean, there's a nice toy. Let me have that one." And the parent says, "No, you can't have it." After a while, the kid gets really obnoxious, <laughs> maybe even <laughs> starts to yell or stomp his feet or something. Parent gets uh, 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 embarrassed, uh, get, breaks down and gives the kid a toy. What, have, what has that parent done? <laughs> what that, that parent has done is to reinforce uh, uh, requesting behavior, this obnoxious whining and, and asking for stuff. He's reinforced it on an intermittent reinforcement schedule which means that that behavior is going to be really difficult to get rid of with extinction. Uh, you've got, and that's why uh, the, the general advice is be really consistent. You know, if uh, I, you could even decide ahead of time, hey, today you're not getting a toy and that's the end of story and then stick to it. So you don't end up reinforcing uh, requests on an intermittent reinforcement schedule. Because if you do, you're never going to get rid of it. Well, uh, there are a lot of activities uh, that are reinforced on an intermittent reinforcement schedule. Success in college courses, <laughs> unfortunately, is like that. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you get an A and sometimes you don't. Uh, handing in assignments, uh, if you're an author or a musician, you know, sometimes uh, I, submitting an article for publication, uh, it gets accepted. And most of the time it gets rejected. Artists face this sort of thing all the time. And uh, one of the things that happens with artists and musicians is they become highly persistent. They continue to continue to do their thing, even though they're not getting any payoff or reward for it. And uh, so intermittent reinforcement builds this kind of tremendous persistence. Uh, why does intermittent reinforcement build that kind of persistence? Well, the reason it does is that if you get intermittent reinforcement, you occasionally face frustration for because you don't get reinforced. And uh, you essentially learn to keep trying in the face of frustration, which is a really useful life skill. And it's if we gave up every time we didn't succeed, uh, we would not get very far because <laughs> uh, we end up making lots of errors. And so we have to learn to keep trying in the face of errors. And intermittent reinforcement uh, teaches you to do that. And because it teaches you to do that, uh, it uh, uh, leads to persistence when uh, times become lean and uh, there is no more reinforcement. So uh, what's the take home message here? The take home message, and the take home message in a lot of these uh, lectures is don't assume you know how it's gonna work. <laughs> don't assume you know how it's gonna work. You know, they have these uh, 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 things that they show on television and uh, magic shows and stuff, and they say, don't try this at home, you know. <laughs> you know a lot of things about the prediction of behavior, uh, don't try it at home. <laughs> Leave, don't, try, uh, don't make a prediction and think you know how it's going to work out uh, because you're going to be wrong. And uh, even uh, professional psychologists are often wrong uh, 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 in uh, making predictions about extinction. I just read an article uh, last week in which uh, somebody wrote about how the reason you get uh, 
uh, more persistent behavior uh, in extinction following partial reinforcement is that extinction is more difficult to detect. Well, that turns out to be incorrect. <laughs> you can create uh, control procedures so that the detection of extinction is uh, just as easy following intermittent reinforcement as it is following continuous reinforcement. Nevertheless, intermittent reinforcement is going to produce much more persistent behavior in extinction. So don't assume that bigger rewards are going to cause uh, slower extinction. Don't assume that uh, more reinforcement is going to cause slower extinction and so on. Don't assume that you know unless you check it out and check it out with an expert. And now you are becoming an expert. So I hope you enjoy that uh, sense of mastery. And we'll see you next time.